welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry I briefly disappeared for a while. I have been working on things behind the scenes and this is one of them. Today I'm actually going to show you how I turn scaffold board into windowsills in my conservatory. This is a six meter by three meter lean-to conservatory. It would have been quite expensive to just do the whole windowsills but we used to have these plastic, white plastic windowsills in here that were scratched to buggery and that's because this conservatory is actually second hand. So those were second hand as well, they came with it and they didn't actually fit properly by the time it had been re-put up. So this saved me about 150 quid based on a quote that I've got online for much thinner wood than this. So God knows how much this would have cost. It would have been so much dearer if I went for oak or ash or something like that, you'd be talking about 200 pounds for maybe two meters. I wasn't prepared to pay that, but these actually were 51 pounds for the scaffold board from Travis Perkins with free delivery because I've got an account with them. It's a free account. It's not a sponsored post, by the way. It was just very convenient because my van can't fit much in it these days because I've got a whole kitchenette in there. So if you want to learn how I did it, then keep on watching. So the very first thing I needed to do was work out my length. So I used my laser measurer and just jotted those down. And then I needed to rip all of the end supports off the scaffold boards. And then it was time to lay it down and use my first ever miter saw. This was scary. <laughs> steady but that was very scary I have to say so a bit more confidence with that and this is not the best platform to do it on but wow slightly liberating but scary <laughs> Then I placed my first piece in position and found I needed a little bit more off. And once I'd cut that, I started measuring my mitre corner. Notice I'd already done one while I was outside, but I would never have cut it anyway. This was definitely a boo-boo and I realized I needed it the other way. And because my right angle wasn't long enough, I needed to use my spirit level to get the full length. <laughs> but I still had to finish it with a handsaw because it didn't pull out enough. And then very slowly and carefully brought it in to put it in place. They weren't the heaviest, but they're very long and I had to be very careful with all the glass around me. Yes, it's looking good. And then here's me checking if there's any unwanted grooves to see where I can sand. And then I repeated the same mitering process to get the other piece to fit. And then place that next to it. I was really pleased with my first attempt and it saved so much time. And then using an electric plane, I just wanted to smooth the longest piece out because it was much wavier than the other one. So I just took out any raised bits and then started going over it with a belt sander. I'd love to have done this outside because it was really messy, but it was raining, so the odds were against me. So that tiny piece is sticking out there and it's stopping the whole board from being flush to the actual um, window. So I need to now just make a pencil marking, cut that now, and I'll probably do that bit by bit until I've got it perfect because I don't want to cut too much out to make it look too gappy. I just need to make it look tidy for when I do put sealant or cork there. So I cut a little groove out with my jigsaw and then pop that back into place so it was a much better fit. So obviously this is too long for this and I need to cut it off. So I'm going to measure this end, see how long it is. And that is four and a half centimetres and I think it should be exactly the way around here as well. And I think that's gonna work. It might stick out too much here, but at least I can chop it a bit down later if I don't like it. So we'll do that. What you doing little man? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Four and a half. And then I just went belt sanding mad, sanding every side apart from the bottom. 
and one thing I learned was you should go against the grain just to prevent any uneven surfaces and I started from 40 grit and worked my way up to a 240 grit with my little finishing hand sander. This was a really long and dusty process but it was something that I didn't want to skip. And then to glue the winter sills down, I use this Norboard D4 glue that my dad gave me. I'll leave the link below. It's about a tenner and it's really, really strong. It's stronger than wood. I just drizzled it over wearing gloves and bearing in mind it does expand. So I also need to make sure I had weights pressing down. So I had to be really creative grabbing anything that we had. So boxes of alcohol came in handy and empty gas bottles. And then once it was set, I just went over the mitered corners again. So I hope you found this video very useful or inspiring, but if you would do it differently, feel free to comment below to help future viewers, because this is the first time I've done anything like this, apart from like gluing skirting boards and things to the wall. And I'm actually now going to paint it with a colour, because I don't quite like the pale pine. And then, and then next week I'm going to get ready to actually put some blinds up, because we're going to get neighbours in very soon. And our conservatory is slightly higher, where they can easily just look through and uh, I just want some privacy, particularly when I do lots of food shots in here for my food blog. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.